We had a snowfall last night and now everything is covered in white and it's just magical. I would like to share the snow co covered forest with you so um, hope you'd like to join me. So you may have heard of the term winter blues. It's when people start feeling a bit down during the winter months. I have struggled with it all my life and learned that it is important to take care of myself during these dark winter months. It means for me to get enough sleep, eat well and staying active. Exercise is a great way to boost my mood and energy levels and of course it's a great excuse to get outside and enjoy the winter weather and look for inspiration for new paintings of course. I try my best to find things that bring me joy and happiness. Hey, Rocky, come. Come. Get enough. Huh? Come, Moose. Snuggling up with a warm blanket or a big mug of warm tea and a good book always helps. And I also enjoy working on small creative projects. This year my friend and I, and I have been making birdhouses with old wooden pallets and reclaimed materials. They aren't perfect. In fact, they look more like they were built by Picasso but I don't think the birds will mind because they are sturdy and will make a safe home for our small feathered f family friends. Don't be too hard on yourself if you're feeling the winter blues. It's a normal thing for many people and maybe especially creative souls and artists. Just remember to take care of yourself and do a little bit of what makes you happy. I really prefer natural daylight when painting, but in winter there aren't many hours of daylight here in the far north, so I have some extra studio lights. They tend to tip over easily. So I came up with this temporary solution using a bag of rice on each lamp and it uh, works great preventing the lights from tilting over. What is your perfect light for painting? Do you have a favorite setup or do you prefer the daylight like I do? Please share your comments below. I would uh, love to know if you have any tips as well. Lately I've been working on several large canvases. They are already stretched uh, and I've been working on them on the floor because I, uh, I've been starting out with some very fluid acrylic paints and inks. In fact they start out very similarly to my smaller paintings on paper. So if you are curious about my process please go ahead and take a look at some of my tutorials here on YouTube where I share the process. I don't have any secrets about my process. I believe that uh, the best we can do is to share with each other and I personally want to share everything that I know to help as many other painters as I can. If you have any questions, you can always ask away in the comments uh, below the videos and I'll do my best to answer it there. Or I might even make a video about it. In fact, I received a few questions about how I go about choosing my colors. Um, 
for my paintings and they really come to me from my local environment and the landscapes here in northern Denmark. I think um, I spend a lot of time walking in the surrounding landscapes and I take tons of photos on my phone. So the colors, they they show up from uh, the nature around me. They show up in my photos and also in my paintings gradually. That's also the reason why my color palette tends to shift throughout the year with the changing seasons. They're always more muted during the winter months, for example. For the last four months, I've also been working on a new online course about abstracting landscapes from photographs, something a lot of you have requested. So I'm really excited about sharing more about that in the coming weeks. So if you are interested in something like this, stay tuned to my channel here or sign up for my newsletter so you don't miss out. Thank you very much for watching and my best wishes to you from snowy northern Denmark. <laughs>